Good evening, everyone. I hope you all had a great week. My name is Jerry D'Ambrosio, and I'm excited to introduce tonight's special presentation titled Another Day at the Track. We started the Jockey Club back in November, and it's been a smash hit with our Derby subscribers. They tell us every day how much more confident they are trading the markets and how, by following the routine, they're seeing gains in their portfolio like never before. In fact, I wanted to share a little bit of what one of our Jockey Club members sent to us. Jim Hurley hails from Roswell, Georgia, and he sent us an email a few days ago. And Jim's been a subscriber now for just about two years. He says, I have been a daily participant since week two. The sessions, which last about an hour, have not only been eye-opening and very revealing, they're now making me money. For the first four weeks or so, I just absorbed the process and got comfortable with the hows, whys, rules, and consequences. I then paper traded up until the first of the year while consistently seeing weekly gains and building enormous confidence. The atmosphere is always collegial and offers valuable two-way sharing. It's helped me build a self-confidence in day trading and short-term swing trading that gives me choices. I'm now able to quickly identify what baskets of stocks to select or cherry pick from. It tells me when to pull the trigger and cautions me when to wait a bit and even when to sit on the sideline in cash. At the end of December 2015, I designated 10% of my portfolio as a quote-unquote fun money account. My goal at the start was to make 2% a week. Some may think that's not a worthwhile percentage, just figure it out. With compound interest, you'll double your money in approximately 9 months. Through 5 weeks, if I maintain my current average gain, I'll double in well less than 6 months. I've not had a losing week this year. Most often, my trading day lasts from 9am to 10.30 Eastern Time. I usually do not place my first trade before 10 a.m., spending the first half hour selecting and solidifying my trade. Usually I'm in and out of the market in one hour, leaving me almost a full day for other activities. There is no searching for the ultimate home run stock and having lots of strikeouts. I now know that I can hit a single or double almost every time up to bat and have runs cross the plate each week. He concludes with the Jockey Club is providing a new freedom that allows me to make money almost every day no matter whether it's an up or a down market day. The best part is that I don't care which way the market is going to go. There have even been bear market days when we've all confidently made money on bull market baskets. I feel that I have better info at my fingertips to make decisions with than most of the rest of the world and I get it instantly well before the rest of the world. The best part is that the Jockey Club is not just profitable, it also makes for a fun, exciting, and confident start to every weekday morning. So I just wanted to share that with you guys, because what Jim is talking about here is what we go through every single morning, is the routine that's become so successful with our Jockey Club members. So sit back, relax, and enjoy today's edition of the VectorVest Jockey Club. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the Vector Vest Jockey Club. I'm your host, Jerry D'Ambrosio. Great to be here with you guys today. Finished the week off uh, on a really not high note. It's been a great week this week, um, and we just look to kind of cap things off with a really good day today. In the background with me, I have Dan Mish today. Glenn, uh, Glenn is not with us, but Dan is with us to uh, answer any questions that you have, uh, you know, throughout the course of today. So really look forward to get getting into the agenda. While I do that, while I read the agenda and kind of go through our, our routine here, uh, let me know how you did yesterday. Um, I'm going to go through, uh, you know, my portfolio performance yesterday. I uh, would love to hear how you guys did. You know, we had a nice reversal, and, and, the, and the afternoon was uh, was really nice. Uh, some opportunities there. I know, uh, you know, the, at the top of the derby, I saw some of those bullish searches really taken off. Once the 60% threshold was hit, uh, and, and Rick, uh, I one of the filters that I was using because um, I did get in a little bit later about 130 140 or so when the market really started to break out um, I had 60% bullish so I'm not sure which filter you were using but it happened a little bit before two o'clock maybe about 140 or so all right um, let me get into the agenda so what we first do is recap the prior day's activity once we do that we then establish a directional bias for today after that, we begin to look at some potential trades, whether they be bullish trades or bearish trades. That all depends on our directional bias. Um, but there's a few ways that we that we do that. 
And I'm going to show you something really cool. Um, you know, we've, we've talked a little bit about swing trading, and, and over the last week or so, I've gone into the Derby tote board and used the other methods of analysis. And when the primary wave first turned up, um, we ran, remember, uh, we went through a little exercise where we looked at the best performing searches over the last five days. And I put three of those searches, the best performers, in a quick folio. I want to uh, update you guys on those quick folios. And I also want to do something really cool uh, with the tote board as well. All right. Once, once we're done with all of that, all the pre-market stuff, um, we then begin to look at the top derby performers. We spend the rest of the morning in the derby. Uh, and, and analyze the top derby performers. Once 10 o'clock comes, that's going to be our, uh, the earliest that, that we're going to pull the trigger. Um, some of you may be getting in early, and some of you may be out by 10 o'clock uh, uh, on some days. Um, futures are up really big today, so today might be one of those days where you know you uh, you know you guys would like to pull the trigger a little earlier. Uh, we'll have that opportunity, but we wait about 10 o'clock, maybe a little after, just to see how things are developing. Uh, throughout the first half hour or so. So to recap the, the prior day's activities, we co consult the home page first. We see uh, and observe how the major indices closed. We identify any color guard changes, any signal changes, any market timing signal changes, or the primary wave, uh, the underlying trend, the confirmed calls. And then we read the vector best views to get a sense of our overall guidance based on everything that we just went through, all, all of the market timing signals. Then we look at a market timing graph. We recap that graph on both an end of day and an intraday basis. We take a look at yesterday's intraday BVC price action and the end of day look as well to get a sense of trend and direction. Uh, uh, we'll report on any candlestick formations that, uh, that are uh, relevant and, and important at the time. Stochastic, we look at stochastics, RT. We just look at the market timing graph and see if there's anything there uh, that might lead us to, uh, to think that we can have a little bit of an extension here with this rally. I mean, there are. There are things that are, that are really um, apparent that would lead us to that. And we'll take a look at those things. And then again, we'll report on, on uh, my, perf my uh, portfolio performance yesterday. To, to establish a directional bias, we check the futures. We look at all, all futures, Europe, Euro, uh, Asia, more important, of course, is here in the U.S. Once we do that and, and start to establish a, a bias for today, we consult the homepage once again, and then we use extended hours. We turn on extended hours, uh, take a look at the, uh, see if there's any color guard changes with extended hours uh, turned on. We then analyze the VVC pre-market as well, see which direction the VVC is, is moving pre-market. All right, and then we look at a market timing graph uh, as well. Right before the market opens, we, we see again how the VVC is trending. To identify movers and shakers, we'll, we'll use the industry viewer, and we will look at the derby from the prior day's close to see which searches this morning already, before the market even opens, see which searches are performing well this morning. We'll start to identify some of the best stocks in those searches. And we're going to favor the searches with persistently rising and hopefully exploding pre-market equity curves. We want to see on an equity curve what we like to see on a market uh, on a stock graph. It go from bottom left to upper right. That's the pattern that we that we look for. Uh, I'm also going to show you that uh, something really cool in the Derby too. Um, using the, the most recent history, maybe the last, I don't know, nine days or so. We then start to analyze the top derby performers. We look for either 60% bullish searches making money or 60% bearish searches making money. Uh, this is the summary section of the derby. That's going to really determine where, you know, which direction we take. <laughs> Excuse me. Whether we go long or whether we go short. We also observe the average percent gain loss of all of those searches and the average percent winning trades, winners in both of those searches. And we look at the VVC trend intraday within the first half hour to an hour, and also the advanced decline ratio to get a sense of market direction, market breadth. Okay, both of those, that's what both of those indicators are, uh, are giving us. Whoops, I'm sorry. And then we place trades on the best performer, best performing derby search, 
And uh, I like to implement a portfolio stop. That, that's, that's our exit criteria. That's what we're using. You can use stops on individual stocks. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's a holy grail, guys, uh, about stops. I really don't. You know, uh, it depends on the search that you use, the type of stocks that you're buying. It really does. So a 5% trail doesn't apply to a dollar stock because you get bounced out really quickly. Um, that's why I like to use a portfolio stop. Disregarding almost each individual position individually, I'm looking at the basket as a whole. And if the portfolio goes down a percent and a half, I'm getting out. And that's what happened to me yesterday. I'll talk about that. But um, uh, winded up going down a percent and a half at some point during the day. So I got out of the uh, of the basket of stocks that I was in. That doesn't mean that you have to be done for the day. You can regroup. You can see how things are developing. That's that's kind of what I did. Uh, and I was able to kind of recoup some of that. So, uh, And I look to close the basket before the closing bell. All right. Before we get into the Q&A, let me open up VectorVest now and take a look at how um, how the major indices closed yesterday. Portfolio stop, yeah, you have to monitor the portfolio, Michael. It can't be set automatically, okay? Uh, Ramek says, when you pull the trigger on any strategy, say at 10 a.m., are the stocks in that strategy from the open or from the prior close? The stocks are from the prior close, Ramek, but the performance that you're seeing is from the open. Okay, that that's how the derby works. That that's basically the uh, the you know the uh, what we're what we're looking at there for each and every search. Major indices finished nicely in the green once again. I mean, the day didn't start out that way, um, but it really closed out. Everything closed at session highs. BBC up twenty six cents. Another green light. Another another star in the price column. This means, folks, without getting into the rules of these of these market timing systems, these stars mean um, that momentum is building. The market is going up on a day over day and week over week basis, and momentum is building. RT is higher on a week over week basis. Buy to sell ratio is higher on a week over week basis. So is the MTI. All right, so things are looking a lot better now than they did a few weeks ago. Um, a lot more upward movement. Than downward movement. Primary wave is still up. Uh, MTI is close to crossing above one, so the underlying trend could could um, go up as well soon. We're still in a confirmed down. Now the buy to sell ratio. We've already gotten a preliminary signal. Have we won? Yeah, we've already gotten a preliminary signal of a sustainable uptrend. We're just waiting for the confirmation. We're waiting for the buy to sell ratio uh, go above one. Now we still have just a little more than twice as many sells than we do buys. Another thing I'm going to show you in a market timing graph, um, you know, because you think with this with this nice move here, you maybe think that the buy to sell ratio would be a little higher, but there are more and more stocks getting hold ratings now. So the transition is 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 a little slower than we than we like to see, but those sells are now becoming holds. So we're you know, and those holds will eventually become buys. But on a market timing graph, I'll show you how you can look at that number and how we we see an increasing number of hold ratings, which means what that the sells are turning into holds, um, you know, which is that that next step. All right, let's see here. Looking at the VVC yesterday, okay. Uh, market was moving sideways. You know, some of the some of the shorting searches were were performing okay. You know, um, during this time, then the market really started to take off. Okay, broke out of that little channel right about uh, one fifteen or one twenty. Um, I'll talk about my portfolio performance actually now. I did go short earlier, if you remember. Gravity wasn't working out too well. I winded up closing down a percent and a half. I saw this rally. I saw the breakout. S&P 400 mid cap slash RT was one of the best performing searches. Got on right about 130, 140, recouped the one and a half percent loss. You're gonna laugh. Um, ending up 0.05 percent, which I think I figured it out. It's about eleven dollars. I'm counting it as a win. <laughs> it's not a loss. I didn't lose money, um, and I'm just playing those little games with myself, right? I'm. I'm I've made money seven straight days, and that's kind of uh, I'm keeping that streak going. If you guys don't mind, um, but it, it, we've had a really good week and a half here. Uh, like I said, made money seven straight weeks, up a little over ten and a half as a portfolio on a whole. So 
kind of what again the really the, the point here is dug dug myself into a little bit of a hole wasn't too bad of a hole 1.5 percent i was able to dig out of that hole wind up flat for the day but i had to make an adjustment i saw this move i had to make an adjustment and i and i did at a really relatively you know a minimum minimal level you know 1.5 isn't too bad i was able to dig my way out phil says a win is a win yeah absolutely a win is a win i'm counting it as a win uh let's go back into a market timing graph or go into a market timing graph and we're looking at the last three months okay uh, this line right I, i've kept this line on that graph because this is the kind of the resistance level that we need to break above and we're right we're close we're right at it uh, as of as of right now with the futures up uh, as they are in fact we could see now the Dow's futures up uh, they're pulling back a bit they were up a lot earlier we could see all the major indices are up but they're pulling back uh, just Mike says a hundred so Dow futures are now up a hundred so uh, looking like a, a you know a higher open of course um, oils up a little bit golds down that's no surprise if we go to Europe everything's up nicely there those those uh, sessions are already in progress and Asia's up uh, as well so a uh, little global stock rally here um, we're, we're seeing a nice move off of this 3179 low on February 11th almost a, an inverted head and shoulders pattern this little pullback here didn't quite come back to this left shoulder level um, but it was a little pullback now we're moving higher got to break through this level if we do uh, this, this is the same resistance zone, guys, right here. That's being drawn if I go to six months. This is really the same zone. We're in that zone now. If I hover your mouse over it, you can see we're just about in that zone. If we happen to break through that, we got an, uh, some upside here all the way up to 35.32. All right, so some nice upside potential if we happen to break through that. Um, break through this level Steven says how did you how do you catch rallies during the day for example one at 130 okay let me let me kind of go over that actually let me look let me look at an intraday graph I'm gonna come back to this but I want to I want to talk about that here's the intraday graph so you're seeing let me let me just zoom in right here so what are you seeing now you're seeing the market move sideways right you're not really getting any any higher highs here you can kind of draw a line here so you know maybe you're short maybe you're flat maybe your portfolio is flat little down little up you never know okay now you start i move forward now you now you see that breakout okay you see a breakout out of that channel that the market's been in there's you there's your reversal okay that along with 60 percent bullish searches in the um in the derby making money and also, you, you're seeing the advanced decline. You're seeing the, the number of stocks going up, increasing quite a bit here with the overall market. Um, so basic, basically, reversals are a, a, a change in pattern, whether it's a channel or lower highs or, or, or whatever pattern you're seeing. Uh, it's a change in pattern. And we saw that change right about, really, the breakout was like 115. But you, you, you got to give it a little bit more time, all right? Just... Uh, sometimes those levels are, are, are retested, but you know, after a little bit of a move up, just to give yourself some more reassurance that uh, it is truly a reversal, you know, maybe 120, 130 is when you got in. All right, going back to a three month graph. If I put on RT now, you could see RT is really strengthening here. Um, just actually hit a, a new high, new little short term high there, 0.91 a few days ago, uh, 0.92 yesterday. I'm going to put this indicator on the buy, hold, and sell uh, percentages. Okay, this is giving you how many, uh, what the percentages are of the buy, sells, and hold. You can see a lot more holds, and you can also see that number increasing over the last four or five days. So those sells, you can see that the sells are decreasing. The buys are also increasing, but you know, uh, at, a, at a little bit of a slower rate. It's taking those those holds a little bit longer once they become holds from a sell to become a buy but you could see that little uh, uh nice little divergence there more and more stocks are getting holds less and less stocks are, are uh, keeping their sell ratings all right macd is bullish and also strengthening we also saw a bullish divergence here 
between the VVC price and the MACD. All right, so the MACD is bullish. It actually turned bullish uh, on February 16th. All right, nice little up move from that uh, from that point. Stochastics technically now, I know we all love this indicator. Um, stochastics is techni technically overbought. Doesn't mean the market can't continue to go up. Okay, but we're not in that blast off phase anymore. We're we're all, we're away from the blast off phase. Now we're starting to, to get into the uptrending phase, believe it or not. Um, and when when that when you start into when you start getting into that that phase, the up an, uh, more of an uptrending phase off of the blast off phase, you start to see things like this. Okay, so stochast stochastics is overbought. Um, doesn't mean the market can't continue to go up. It looks like we're going to have a nice uh, day today. All right. Um, let's see. Let's go into the uh, go back to the home page now. So that's that's a recap of uh, uh, you know the the intraday activity yesterday, also the end of day look uh, as well. I talked about all of our market timing signals and how you know they're becoming more and more bullish. If I turn on extended hours now, you can see the VVC price is up almost three cents a share. Okay. Another green light in the price column. The advanced decline. We got 593 buys, 199 sell. Uh, I'm sorry, 593 stocks going up, 199 stocks going down. Uh, really nice, nice uh, ratio there. It was increasing as well. It was strengthening. It's starting to taper off a little bit. I know we saw the futures doing doing the same thing, but uh, all in all, still a lot more stocks going up today than are going down. If I go to a market timing graph now, looking at an intraday, one minute bar, best fit. Let me take off stochastics, take off this line here. Here's the vector vest composite now. This morning, here's the eight o'clock uh, candle. Moving steadily higher for the first, uh, let's see, hour. Starting to just soften a little bit here, heading in, into the open. And then again, this blue shaded area is pre-market market activity. All right, let me go into the portfolios because these are the three portfolios that I created on February 16th. The reason why I created these quick folios is because on February 16th, the primary wave turned up for the first time. It was down for a, a long time prior to that. So the primary wave first turned up. That's your first trend change, first trend indicator change. And that's when you could have went long. That's when you start buying stocks and you start swing trading and holding them overnight. Okay. So I set up three quick folios of the three best searches that we found together in the Derby from February 16th. Give me one second. From February 16th, five days prior. The 16th was here. That's when the primary wave first turned up. We looked five days prior to see what were the best performing searches in the Derby during this time period. I then set up quick folios of those searches. Here, how, here are how they're performing. Oddfellows long from the 16th till now, up 11.5%. Here's an end of day equity curve. Jubilee, up 7.5% with the end of, end of day equity curve here. Looks pretty good, right? Now, we probably would have gotten rid of this guy down 17.5%. This is just no money management, folks, just uh, buy and hold, okay? Odd fellows, we also would have gotten rid of this guy, PN, down 28%. We may have taken profits along the way here, but we're letting our winners run when, when you know, uh, and Momo, I think, if I look at a graph of that stock, I don't think it's done nothing but go up uh, since the 16th. There it is, yeah, we, you know, no reason really to sell it. This was a little bit of a down day, but kind of had no reason to sell it. I don't even think a 5% trailing stop would have gotten us out. So letting the winners run, you could see a nice 40% gain there. And then blue chip bargains. 10 winners, no losers, up 6%, nice equity curve. Now with this type of a search, you can see we're looking at a lot a higher dollar stock. You're not going to get the, per, uh, the percentage performance, but you tend to get a steadier return. All right. Now, let me go into the Derby because you may be wondering, well, this is just a buy and hold situation. Okay. I know that these were the three of the best performing searches um, in the Derby from the 16th, five days prior, but how have they held up in the Derby 
looking at these searches uh, differently than just a buy and hold mode, right? So what we can do is our start date now here is the 16th. I want to know from the 16th till today how those searches are performing. Now let's just take a look at day trading first, day trading mode. Nine quick tests run each and every day. Take a look at the top two searches here, Jubilee and Odd Fellows Long. Just, just to kind of refresh your memory here, there's Jubilee, there's Odd Fellows Long. We got Blue Chip Bargains VST slash RT is the other search. Jubilee, Odd Fellows Long, on a day trading basis, you know, uh, close to close for nine days, the two best performing searches, 21.65%, 17.92%. Very minimal maximum draw, uh, drawdown here. Uh, percentage of winning days, 89 and 78. And here's blue chip bargains, VST slash RT. Again, great performance, 10%. But with that type of a search, those type of stocks, you, you're not going to get the explosive uh, gains that that um, that you that you're going to get with some of these lower dollar stocks. Okay, so that's the day trading mode. We saw we kind of saw the buy and hold mode, right? Right. So uh, odd fellows long, 20%. That's just a buy and hold from uh, from the the, the 16th. Uh, Jubilee, 13%. And then I have to sc uh, scroll down a little bit. Do I? Yeah. Uh, Blue chip bargains VST, 9%. Nice gains nonetheless. Okay. Now vary the start date. We're just going to run nine quick tests, but we're just going to vary the, the the beginning date of each of those tests. You can see. 16th to the 26th, 17th to the 26th, and so on. Odd Fellows Long, an average of 8%. Jubilee, an average of 5%. And Blue Chip Bargains VST, uh, RT, average of 3.5%. And we'll look at one more uh, sliding window. There's Odd Fellows Long. There's Jubilee. I think you're kind of getting what I'm, uh, you know, my, the picture here. We found these searches in the Derby for on the 16th when the primary wave first turned up. These are, folks, your, your, um, these are your options. These are your choices in, in terms of what searches you would use if you're thinking about swing trading. And, and, and you're thinking about swing trading because of what we're seeing here in our color guard. Green lights in the price column. Stars in the price column of the color guard. Primary wave is up. All, right? all of these things are leading you to, of course, being bullish, but being able to, to hold positions overnight, any bullish positions that you take on overnight. Okay, let me go back into the derby. We have about six minutes to the market opens. I wanted to show you that because that's kind of, that's really, um, you know, that's how you use these different analysis modes here in the derby to identify searches that are performing well, uh, uh, you know, performing consistently well, high average number of winners, okay, uh, things like that. Okay. These were the best performing searches when the front primary wave first turned up. These were how the, uh, the quick folios performed. And these are how the, those searches performed uh, you know, when, you, when you put them through the ringer, so to speak. When you start to look at them differently than just point to point. Okay. John says, swing is two days hold. Swing is, is, any, uh, is, is a couple of days, two days, because a day trade is just you getting out of that position at the end of that day. Um, two days to, a, to a, a week or two, a couple of weeks, and, and a couple of weeks is, is on the higher end of it, of course, especially in this market. Um, okay. Jack says, can you go back in time with the Derby to set up a f portfolio? Go back in time. and I, I'm not sure what you mean by that, Jack. I, I did that. Um, we're looking at the last nine days, and these are the best performing searches. So let's say I wanted to create another quick folio. I already have a quick folio of Outfellows Long. Maybe I don't have to create another one, but Angel's Wings, Bottom Fishing and Rising Industry Groups, Thornton's Thunder. Okay. That's sliding window. Vary the start date. Let's see. Angel's Wings. Um, a couple of S&P searches up at the top of the list. So let's take a look. Where were they on the sliding window? There's the S&P 500 stop ascending. Let's go to day trading. Here it is again. So S&P 500 stop ascending is is a search that continue and Jubilee and Oddfellows all of these you know these searches are continuing to come up to the top of the list. 
for the most part, Silver Singles, Jubilee, Odd Fellows, Long again. So now you're, you're sitting in a position where you're, you're thinking about maybe, you know, uh, swing trading and replacing stocks, you know, as you get stopped out possibly. And you're looking for searches to, to, to select from. Now, there's nothing that says that because you like Odd Fellows Long and Silver Singles and S&P 500 Stop Ascending, that you have to take all 10 stocks from each of those searches. You, what you could have done is gone into each of the searches and just cherry picked some, you know, wait a day or wait an hour or, or a few hours and see which of these stocks are performing the best in each of these portfolios. Okay, you're you now in that way, you're more selective in, in your in your stock selection. <laughs> You've done the legwork before, you know, which searches are performing well. And you're again, you're just being more selective and you're, and you're cherry picking the top performing stocks in each of those searches. Lloyd asked, do the stocks returned in the Derby searches change as the day progresses or are the selections fixed for the day? They're fixed for the day, Lloyd. Um, if I go to the Derby. And just go to today, today's derby. These stocks in the S&P 400 mid cap slash RT uh, derby portfolio with these filters will not change throughout the day. Wow, Sun Edison is up 37% or, uh, today. So these stocks will not change. If I change the filter, though, that could change some of the stocks in this search because uh, of, of the filter um, change that I made. However, with this filter now, these stocks will not change. Okay, so the stocks will not change just depending on the filter that you use. Bob says, "What? A, uh, how about for buy and hold? Same 10 stocks throughout? Yes, buy and hold in uh, this buy and hold mode? Yes, same 10 stocks throughout. You can see them actually here when you click on them. So I'm sorry, I didn't do that before. 19%, nice equity curve, odd fellows long. Um, same 10 stocks. All right, so this morning now, let me just go back to all in all. We got, uh, we're close to the uh, market open, but some of the stocks, Sun Edison is really the, the stock here that's, that's pulling all of these portfolios. You do have WLL. This is jailbreak now. You have a few stocks in here that are, look at that equity curve too, kind of heading into the open. Looks really good. Um, but, you know, what we want to do too is we want to take a look at, at how Blue Chip Bargains performs, how Jubilee performs today, how Odd Fellows Long performs today, um, how S&P 500 Stop Ascending or, or the, the some of the S&P 500 searches that um, we can see a couple of them here. Silver Singles. Remember, we saw these searches at the top of the derby uh, in the different analysis modes over the last uh, week or so. All right. Well, opening bell. So let's take a look at how uh, you know things things are coming out of the gate. I'm going to take off extended hours, and now I have to change the entry price in the derby to the market open. Really quickly, let's just take a look at how the major indices open nicely to the upside. Dow 44, Nasdaq 32, S and P six. DVC up uh, 10 cents a share. Russell 2000 slash RT out of the gate very quickly. Now, you, you know, we don't really see a lot of winners just yet, as, except for VST Rockets actually has 80% winners so far. Quarter of a percent gain so far. I know we're only not even a minute, minute in, but it's nice to see that this search has a high number of winners already. Advanced decline. We don't have enough data to fill a graph yet, but we have 3,800, 3,900 stocks going up, 1,400 stocks going down. Nice ratio there. And then what we're, we're going to do is we're going to continue to track the trend of, of this ratio here, whether it's we want it to be strengthening um, you know, throughout the first half hour, throughout the day even. All right, so here we have... 55 okay so i'm just having a price greater than a dollar which is all average volume greater than 100,000 shares which is all 
Uh, let's see, close to 50% bullish searches, making money only only 20% uh, bearish. All right, so leaning a little bit more towards the bullish side, at least so far. Bottom fishing and rising industries. Again, a lot of these stocks haven't even traded yet. That's that's kind of what you get too with with a uh, uh, 100,000 share filter. If I increase the volume, we start we start to increase the winners because a lot of these stocks are already trading. All right, I, I like to do that. You guys know this. I like to keep the volume. I, sh I shouldn't do it, but I like to keep the volume at 500,000 just, just to get all of us some liquidity. You can, of course, change that. That really has to do with preference uh, and, and you know which filter here is giving us the strongest, the strongest bias. So right now it looks that 500,000 shares is giving us a stronger bullish bias. Mini rockets long too. Nine, nine out of ten, eight out of ten stocks going up. A nice um, 0.82 percent gain. Actually, I think I give me one second here. I'm going to go to application settings. I'm sorry because I I put my portfolio graphs on end of day. I think that's why we're not seeing because this is considered a portfolio mini graph. Let's see if it uh, picks up. Give some data there. Wonderful. All right. 0.84%. Nine, uh, nine winners. Let's see. AHT really come out of the gate fast. 3% three, 3 already. Okay. Uh, SLM up there as well. Explosive EPS stocks too. Only 60% winners so far. Okay. 0.83% uh, gain. Let me just do this. While the, I'm going to go to the Derby view. And I'm going to stay on the Derby view here. Because I, I think you, some of you guys like this. Uh, we, you're able to see now, it's a race, right? You're able to see which horses here, which searches may not have come out of the gate the, the fastest, but are now really starting to pick up steam. Look at dividend payers. This is really starting to uh, silver singles as well. Okay, S&P 400 mid cap. This is the search that I got into yesterday, actually, uh, you know, early afternoon. Uh, doing well today, almost up a percent. But look at silver singles. Look at a graph here. This search is really picking up some momentum, right? Seven out of ten stocks going up. GLBL up almost eleven percent. David says, "What was yesterday's result in portfolio selection?" I ended up, David, 005 <laughs> percent. And I say up. I was up 005 percent. I was not down for the day. Uh, look at AC's percent price profits. You can see now this is starting to. Uh, to lose a lot of momentum, while Silver Singles is really picking up some steam here, 1.34%. Do we still have a bullish bias? No, nah, we, we don't. We're starting to, to come down. We can see that AC is losing some steam. Okay. Rick says, uh, graph pulling back. So, yeah, while we have Silver Singles performing really well here, let's look at a, uh, a market timing graph. All right, and we'll stay. This is, this is just now today. All right, and we'll stay here. Um, and we'll throw stochastics on there as well. Major indices are a little off of their uh, highs. You can see the advanced decline also uh, losing some momentum. There are a lot more stocks in the green today than there are in the red, but you can see that that trend is just changing a little bit. Again, we're only five minutes in. Going back into the derby, uh, when you when you. When you go away from the derby and come back to it, it, it refreshes. Um, but we'll just take a look. We'll keep an eye on this little race here. We're not ready to pull the trigger, of course, but we'll just keep, you know, we'll, we'll watch the race as it uh, as it unfolds. We can see which searches are starting to perform well. Got dividend payers, 1.16% gain. Silver, uh, S&P 400, this is uh, the lead horse, obviously, right? Now Sun Edison is up 14% from the open of today. This is really starting to move. Take a look at that equity curve. Okay, 57% bullish. A little, a little average gain there. S&P 400 mid cap folks up 2.17% already. Definitely our lead horse. But you have dividend payers. Um, you know, moving on up. Mini rockets long as well, kind of moving up a little bit. S&P 400, as you watch that percentage gain, just continue to increase there and up, up a little over 2%.
Mike says up 29% on CAI since 217. Very nice little swing trade there, Mike. Use the rules long now, gaining some momentum. S&P 400 mid cap pulling back a little bit. So if I had to guess, ugh, oh, the market's, market's really moving up higher here now. All right. S&P 400 mid caps at the top, 1.68 is starting to pull back a little bit. Firework stocks up a percent, starting to uh, to increase its momentum. Jailbreak starting to pick up some steam, up 0.93%. Uh, Started out underwater, really starting to move higher. Let's see what we have in here. Salt, remember salt? Up another 5% today. Okay, how did it close yesterday? Let me look at that graph. I really didn't pay attention to it. Oh, no, it actually closed. Interesting, that was up 45% pre-market. Well, it's moving up really nicely today, really nicely today. So this might have been a, a, um, a swing trade that you guys have placed uh, with jailbreak because it continues to appear in jailbreak. Aggressive is starting to take, it has taken the lead now. Let me change the filter. Let me go to greater than $10. Fifty four percent because I want to watch the watch the race, folks. And notice every time I change anything that it, it refreshes, which is which it should do. But I'm going to stay on the filter, at least for the time being, that's giving me the strongest bias. I'm going to stay here for now. Price greater than a dollar average volume greater than five hundred thousand shares because, um, I, again, I want to I want to watch the, the race here. So aggressive looks like it's starting to perform. OK, point eight five percent. Market's pulling back off of its uh, off of its uh, recent high there. Fifty four. Okay. Dave says, "Does the Derby searches arrange by top performing every five seconds?" No, um, it ticks, I believe, every five seconds, but it doesn't rearrange performance unless you click refresh or if you leave the derby or, or change anything here and come back, then it will refresh the order in the, li uh, in the list. All right. Uh, let's see. S&P 600 small cap, 1.33% gain. Really starting to pick up. MWW, let's see. BAS, so that's down a little bit. BCEI, okay. Lower dollar stock, but uh, I know I made some money on this a few weeks ago, I believe, up almost 4% now. All right, equity curve looks pretty good. So it uh, looks like, well, look at jailbreak. Really starting to come up. 1.33%. So here, here you have something that may not be at the top of the list just yet, but is working its way higher, right? And doing so with, with uh, a lot more momentum. You got salt. So you got the two of those stocks now. Salt was in one of the searches. BCEI was in the other. Now they're combined, in, in, and both of those nice performers are in the same search. Do have a couple of losers in here, but 1.4% gain. Dave says, do you have to scroll up and down to find the top performer? Yeah. Yeah, there's only so many searches you can see just by, by being here. Um, so, yes, you do have to scroll up and down. All right, so currently I'm at 63% uh, price uh, at all, average volume greater than 500,000. S&P 600, jailbreak. I'm not going to leave here because I, I, I want to continue to see this race. I want to see jailbreak now up 1.4%. So you have your two, two horses, really, that are a couple of horses that are in the lead. Jailbreak and these two S&P stocks, um, uh, S&P 600, S&P 400 searches that are performing well. 600 is really starting to take off. 1.88%. We have 62%. Um, Kamel says LABU is up more than 4%. The Derby shows more than one. Why the difference? The 4% Kamel is from the close of yesterday. The 1% is from the open of today. That's the difference there. Benson's Boomers. Somebody said check out Benson's Boomers. Where's Benson's Boomers? Well, as you scroll down, you, know, you see, again, you can you can see which searches. 
Here's El Cheapo Cheapos, okay, 1.32%. Now, this started, uh, didn't start off that great, but you can see it's starting to pick up some steam here. You want to see this uh, break through that recent 0.9, well, it just did, actually. Now, 1.14%. Uh, I don't like it so much right now because it only has four winners, okay? So I, I'd wait a little bit. I'd wait till, to see it, uh, you know, gather some more winners there. But as you scroll up, here's finding fireworks stocks now in the lead, 1.92%, a little over 2% 2, uh, 2 actually. RJUT, Republic Air, uh, Airways, up 20%, 24%. It's a lower dollar stock, okay, um, but it is up 22% so far. All right, let me increase the uh, to greater than 2 Finding Fireworks stock, uh, wow, over 3% here. Has uh, Republic in here as well. KJC, a few gold stocks in here. Rick just said the graph is making a lower low. But look at that equity curve. You got one stock. Look at RJ, uh, look at Republic Airways. Really moving. Um, what's the market timing graph doing? Uh, not quite a lower low. So here's here's the open. Uh yeah, Kamel says DJ losing steam. So yeah, the market's pulling back now. Here's a here's the opening low. Here's the closing minute low. I guess you you know this was at 9:30 on the close of the minute, which was up here. So you know technically, yeah, I guess we're breaking through a, a, a you know a lower closing low. Advanced decline steadily falling. All right, so this is starting to change our perspective a little bit. Interesting though. That still the best performing searches are all bullish. Well, you know what? Gold. <laughs> uh, a lot of these bullish searches, these long searches, have gold in it. So market's falling, gold is rising. That that's that that's why that makes sense. But now we only have 48% bullish. So not necessarily ready to go long. Not re not ready to go short just yet either. All right. Finding fireworks stocks, Gordon's groupies. I don't think it has. It does. Uh, only wow. Not many winners in here uh, at all. Only forty-four percent bullish. So, you know, while let me let me go back to the spreadsheet view. The the race has slowed a bit. Uh, not much action any uh, anymore. Um, you know, with things transitioning here just a little bit. So we'll stay here. You know, we'll observe some of these top performers. Finding Fireworks is up nicely, but again, it's that one stock that's really pulling it, its weight. Only 60% winners. Fireworks, best stocks under 15, has 90% winners. Okay, so this is a this is a search that all gold again. I'm sorry, um, you know, we're not gonna we're not gonna buy these stocks. I hope we're not. If we decide to go long today, if we have a bullish bias, that means that the overall market is going up. These stocks are likely to be going down. So we're not going to really consider any of these stocks that have the majority of the stocks in there that are, are gold stocks if we have a bullish overall market bias. Does that make sense to everybody? Because you may see some of them at the top and they may st be staying up at the top of the list because of the percentages are so high. But these searches down at the bottom that don't have any gold stocks in them, this one all does. What you're, which, what we're going to be looking for is, are searches that don't have any gold stocks in them. Okay, um, if the market's going up, market's in that middling stage right now. Okay, we've got one, one big green bar on the VVC. Let's pull this back a little bit. But if the market's bullish, let me kind of retract that for a second. Because if this search, let me, I'll say this. If the search is up at the top of the list, have equity curves that are continuing to go up as the market's going up, almost don't care what's in the, what's, what type of stocks in here. You know, that means that gold today is, is, uh, is keeping track or following suit with the overall market. What I don't want to see is the market going up and these equity curves starting to, to fall and hit lower lows. Again, listen, if, if they're going up, we're, we're going to, we're going to favor them. Of course, uh, that, that just all depends what happens. All right. So here we have finding fireworks stocks. Almost at a new high, 3.87%. 
only 50% bullish. Let me go to all. Only 49% bullish, greater than 5. And it just keeps going down. The percentages keep going down there. So I think no real, no real bias yet, obviously, no matter which filter I use. Market's falling. It's, uh, stochastics, though, is entering uh, into oversold territory. All right, but the market you can see is just about to really establish a new, uh, new intraday low there. Advanced decline is steadily falling. Still more stocks, two, uh, just about a two to one uh, advanced decline ratio, but the gap is closing. You can see the advanced decline is steadily falling there. Okay, along with the vector best composite, we're not seeing though uh, many bearish searches making money. Okay, we're seeing gold perform well. All right, um, which is which is fine. You know, again, I I I say this a lot that one of the best things about the Derby is, is that no matter what is going on throughout the day, in front of you, you have the best performing searches and the best performing stocks each and every day. This only has three winners in it, so I definitely overlook that. Okay, so again. You don't necessarily have to make sense of what's going on in the market. All you have to do is just come here, click on, on these searches, find the best stocks, look at the equity curve, make sure they're going up. I mean, what what else what else do you really need to see? Look at fire now finding fireworks stocks. Market's getting killed. Our jet is up 37%. All right. 4.5% gain there. Four point two percent. Market just just established a lower low against the Castix though is in that over uh, oversold situation. With that, we're still not seeing a lot of bearish searches. Okay, we're, we're not seeing a lot of bullish either. Yeah, Rich said F, uh, uh, R Jet filed for bank uh, bankruptcy last night. Wow. Okay. All right. Yep. Thanks, guys. I appreciate that. Gordon's group is only three. Best stocks under uh, 15. Nice solid performance here, though. 90% winners. W only a 1.68% gain so far. 6.9% gain. Again, we're not going long yet. We're not. We're not. We're not establishing a bullish bias. We're just taking a look at some of the better performing searches in, in here and look at best stocks under 15. I like the more consistent gain here. Okay. Look at finding firework stocks. Wow, 53%. Has anybody jumped on our jet yet this morning? Um, you know, I know you don't want to chase a 30% uh, return there, but now it's up 53%. It's just keep going up. Let me look at an intraday graph. Well, the gap down, but now it's starting to move. Wow, look at that. Gap down, but now it's really starting to move uh, steadily higher here. What upside? <laughs> you have with with this stock today okay um 53 we're going to keep an eye on this guy okay i want to see what, what type of volume that this uh this sir scroll over take off relatively high volume here okay so the stock's moving up relatively high volume all right We'll keep an eye on this. Almost six six percent already. Okay, what's the market doing? The market is kind of in that middling stage, so we're just kind of off of the low. Okay, Ken, great great observation. Ken says you have stock price greater than two, but our jet comes up at ninety five cents. Remember, where is it? Remember when these stocks were taken. These stocks were taken from the close of yesterday. It was over $2 yesterday, okay, as of the close. But as of the open today, it opened today at $0.62. Cents. That's why this stock is in here. Again, as of the close of yesterday, that's when we found these stocks. Um, I, I was wondering that myself until I kind of thought it out. It was over $2. And if you just want to see that on a graph, you can see well over two bucks yesterday and that that's why it's in the list 
Uh, Ron says trading halted on our jet. Looks like it is. Yeah, it hasn't hasn't uh, hasn't moved here. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Richard. Art says jobs report at ten o'clock. All right, so we got nine minutes till ten o'clock. Um, Gordon's groupies that has our jet in it as well. Best stocks under. Um, 55% bullish now. All right, so we're starting to see. That's interesting. All right. So as the as more and more, this is interesting, as more and more bullish searches are making money, the market is going up. Okay. The best performing searches have a lot of gold stocks in them. Okay. So my first, uh, um, intuition i guess you could say was was wrong because gold is actually moving up now from the open and it's kind of following suit with the overall market somebody said earlier don't discount gold um which is absolutely right um you know, a lot of gold stocks are performing well really well here 56 percent bullish i know i haven't changed the filters i'm sorry let me just go price greater than a dollar 55.39 percent Greater than two bucks, fifty-five point four four percent. Greater than five, and then greater than ten. Looks like greater than two is the sweet spot. Okay. Joe says gold miners are not always a contrarian play. Right, Joe. Not always. It, it has been for quite some time, but right, you're right. Not not always. All right. Uh, let's see. Fifty-five percent bullish, almost a half a percent gain there. Are we seeing, yeah, market, see the advanced decline starting to pick up some steam. Still a lot more stocks going up, and the VVC looks like it's turning the corner as well. So, jobs report is at 10. So, 10 o'clock would be kind of, you know, the earliest, right? I'm going to draw that line. We all know what that line <laughs> represents. That re represents the intraday high, and if we're ready to go long, we want to see that high broken before we do so. We want to see that high broken. We all also want to see... Uh, you know, 60% bullish searches uh, making money. We, we, we're getting close, 57%. Audrey says up $300 in two minutes on NUGT. Awesome. Very nice. All right. We're going to, if you select finding fireworks stocks, you want to discount uh, our, our jet, right? Uh, from what we've we heard, it, it's halted trading, but you still have, out of the rest, you have seven winners and two losers. Okay, so it's, it's uh, a pretty good search overall. If you want to move down the list, let me do this. Let me go to Derby View. Let me go back to Derby View, and let's see now. We're heading into trigger, trigger time, right? We're heading into our entry. Um, or at least the earliest, right? 10 o'clock and, and we wait for that level to be broken. Let's watch the race. Let's watch and see in the next six minutes which searches are, are, uh, you know, are, are exhibiting the, the strongest momentum heading into you know, when we're ready to place our trades. Okay, Finding fireworks stocks, wow, 7%. Well, our jet looks like it, 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 trading has resumed. It's up now 59%. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on there, but uh, listen, if you want to hop on board, folks, place your order. If it, if, if it fills, it fills. But if, listen, that's just here. Here it is. If you want to hop on that opportunity, do so. Seven percent up 61 percent here. I really like uh, finding fireworks socks. I'm going to put this search in my watch list and I'm going to I'm going to see. If at 10 o'clock we're ready to uh, pull the trigger. One second here while I do that. Actually, let me make sure it's empty first. It is? All right. Finding firework stocks. Put those stocks into my watch list. 7.83%. 65% bullish. So we have our 65% bullish. And we have our break, folks. All right. Now, listen. If you want to wait for the jobs report at ten o'clock, uh, you know that that's that's up to you. But we have our signal now. We have our uh, sixty-five percent bullish. We have finding fireworks stocks. Wow. Nine percent. Higher high. Ray says, "Yep." 
Larry says, S&P 600 RT looks good to me. Yes, it sure does. It sure does. Uh, UNT, look at that equity curve there. How's the market? Just broke through the high. So sometimes we, we may want to just wait for a retest. We may get a retest of this uh, resistance level. Uh, if we get a few more up bars, going back into the derby, 9% here. <laughs> Richard said halted our jet again. All right, so it's playing games with us, guys. They're playing games with us here. Um, but you, you have the rest of the stocks in there that are performing pretty well, right? 65%. I'm, I'm going to delete that watch list if, if our jet is uh, not trading at the moment. Gordon's Groupies, it has it in there as well. Only 30% uh, winners. Let's see. 60%. How's the advanced decline looking? Well, it was looking good. Now it's just starting to pull back. So remember I said, what about that retest, right? We didn't get a few more bars follow through just yet. All right. Got to wait for that retest. You know, the one one minute break isn't enough, uh, you know, for me anyway. I, I wait for that retest, and that's what we're seeing. So we're not necessarily ready to go long just yet because we have that retest of that support level. Not to mention Stochastics was in overbought uh, territory already. All right, so not quite ready to go long. We do have a, a slightly bullish bias, okay, but we're just waiting for the a, a better entry. All right. Let me go back to the spreadsheet view because I want to see. Yeah, S&P 600 small cap. This one looks great. This search looks great. 100% winners. All right, I'm going to add those. Just preparing. That's all I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not pulling the trigger just yet, right? We know why. We're seeing a little bit of a retracement here off of that level. But I'm putting those stocks in my watch list so that when I'm ready to pull the trigger, I can go right into RoboTrader, and here they are. They're ready to be bought. Okay. Let me go back into the Derby. Gordon's Group is only five. S&P, there we go. Six hundred small cap RT. All right. Bottoms up. Only seventy. El Cheapos two percent. Now it's starting to pull back a little bit. So those gold stocks are starting to pull back. Just want to take a look at something real quick. MWW, BBG, ATW. ATW, MWW, BBG. Okay. All right. So 90% winners. Here's El Cheapos with 100% winners. Here are our lead horses. We're still not quite at 60% though. And the VVC is pulling back. Harriet says, why put into a watch list instead of a quick folio? The way that the, the, uh, the robo trader uh, is right now um, and the way the derby the integration is right now I have to put the stocks in a watch list first because what I've done is I've created a search that only looks at that watch list so that when I go into Robo Trader and manage my trading system I'm using that search so that my my, my selections vary on a day-to-day -day basis but that what that I'm always using that watch list to make my selections and the watch list is built from the Derby stocks. But it's just said a lot of words there. I'm not sure if you, if you, if you understood. Um, Harry says, so how does it know quantity? Um, because of the amount of money that I'm investing in each position. It's all in my trading system. So if I, if I go to my trading system, go to the automation rules, the more settings, I'm investing the average portfolio value. So it's taking the uh, average value and uh, investing that into each of the 10 positions. Okay, good. All right, market timing graph, VVC is falling now. All right, so it, it, it did break through, but we retested it. We wait for that retest. You could see that it happened right at uh, right in the over, uh, overbought level as well. All right, so now we have this level. We have, we have uh, this, low, this swing low here that if the market breaks through that level and we have 60% bearish, you may want to think about going short or potentially buying gold, uh, buying gold stocks, which, let's see, market's starting to go down. See, our jet is skewing things just a little bit. It's up uh, over a buck now. 
John says, what was the job numbers at 10 o'clock? I don't, I don't know. I don't, uh, I, I can't really see that, but we could see what the market's doing and how it's reacting to it. Um, you know, it's at, reacting unfavorably right now. So we still have a green light. Major indices are well off of their session highs. We could see what the advanced decline is doing. That's hitting lower highs. John says the VVC is looking like an EKG. Sure is. Yeah. Right. Not a not a very healthy one. Um, it's it's fluctuating a lot here. A lot of a lot of big swings already this morning. All right. So that's not comforting um, to see these kind of these swings happen so uh, so early within the the first half hour. Okay. Peter says consumer sentiment is down big. That was also at ten o'clock. Thank you, Peter. All right. What are we seeing here? I don't think we're seeing much in terms of uh, performance here. 50%, 51% bullish. Let me scroll down. Let's see. Does angels, angels wings. Here we go. Market's falling. Gold should be rising, and it's not. All right, so these stocks, this search is not is not performing that well. It's Yeah, it has 100% it has winners, but you can see that equity curve. Let's go to S&P 600. Is this one still? Probably not. Well, nope, kind of kind of tapering off here a little bit. Oh, Mike says jobs are next Friday. Consumer sentiment was today. Thank you, Mike. Gotcha. Okay, now Kathleen says consumer sentiment gained. All right, let's see here. Yep, here, here's a... Here's, uh, Here's the channel. Now the market is clearly now trading in a channel. There's the upper portion of the channel. Here's the lower portion of the channel. All right. Personal income up a half a percent, Mikkel says. Thank you, Mikkel. All right. So we're kind of in that really middling stage. You know, um, listen, if things don't develop, if, if we continue to see you know, uh, the lack of strength here in, on either side, the bullish or bearish, I'm absolutely okay with sitting on the sidelines today. Um, you guys have had a great week. I've had a great week. You know, I think, uh, two, I think I'm up two and three quarters percent this week. Um, you know, it's Friday. I'm happy to, I'm happy to take that if things are going to, uh, you know, appear as, as they are, at least for the time being, right? Market moving sideways, no real direction right as of right now. Uh, Jack says, look at the advanced decline. Yeah, it's steadily falling. All right, but the market's moving sideways. All right, so the market, interesting here. Look at this little uh, divergence. VVC hit a new high, barely. But look at the advanced decline. It hit a lower high. So there's not much breath here. There, there wasn't much breath behind this move. Okay. Benjamin says, I'm not having a great week, just like 20 bucks up, but I'll take it. Good, good way to look at it, Benjamin. Um, a win is a win. That's, that's what you guys have to have to know. And, and the more wins every week we can get just, you know, the greater the experience will be each and every day. So going back into the Derby now, 48% bullish, really not seeing much here. Um, Jack says, could be that the market is running out of steam. Sure. Uh, let's see. Bill says, so do you think that gold stocks are the way to go? I think anything is, is the way to go if you see them going up. Uh, so no matter what happens today, if I see those stocks, and, and there's no gold stocks in here. So uh, if I see, here they are, angels' wings. If I see them going up, and if I see this equity curve hitting higher highs, I got 100% winners. Yes, I think that that would be the way to go. Um, absolutely. Now, what's the market doing? Market's now falling. We're, we're approaching that support level. Um, only 21% bearish searches making money, and all the bull searches uh, have gold in it <laughs> for the most part. So uh, where's Angel's Wings again? Here, here's Angel's Wings now. This may be something that you want to consider. Because it has 100% winners, the market's going down. You want to see this, of course, going up. It looked like it was starting to, but now it's not. All right. Kathleen says, your portfolio is up over 2,000 from when you started a month ago. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, but I think it's been five weeks now. 
it's been five weeks, uh, just about 11%. Not, not so bad. Uh, Midas Touch VST, and all I'm doing, folks, is I'm following this routine. And we've gotten some really, really nice feedback from some of you recently on how um, this routine is changing your way of thinking a little bit about, about the market. And you're having a lot of success. I'm really happy for, for all of you guys um, that are kind of, you know, finally starting to understand. Somebody said yesterday in the, in the chat room, I finally get it now. So it's maybe taken a few weeks or so, um, but it's, it's finally starting to kind of uh, sink in a little bit. All right, going back to the market timing graph, we are just moving sideways in and out, up and down, um, you know, in, in this channel here. We can see we're technically oversold, so maybe we, we start to bounce off of this level and, and approach resistance once again. Mike says, looks like I'll wait until this afternoon. Yeah, you know, we, we yesterday, I can't see yesterday anymore. Yesterday, we kind of saw the same thing throughout the first couple of hours. Um, you know, we saw a strong move to the downside early, but then we saw a lot of sideways movement um, after that. But then we had a nice breakout once the, once the afternoon. That may happen again, folks. I, you know, again, no way to know, no way to know that. Um, but if if you're able to kind of watch things throughout the day and you see that and you see that the momentum being gained, especially now, with, you know, with the bullish searches starting to make money, um, you know, you, got, you, you want to hop on it. Again, if you're up this week, uh, percent and a half, two, three, whatever you're up, if you want to just, just keep that and book that and, and – uh, and enjoy the weekend <laughs> you can do that as well all right s p 600 this is still up at the top close to the top but it's not performing very well all right john says i i, I will wait till next week and go fishing today uh, dan wrote back now that's a trading plan yeah that is a trading plan i like that uh, let's see, going to a market timing graph. All right, well, we just broke through that lower low now. Still an oversold situation. Again, that's one bar. Let's see what really happens here over the next few minutes. All right, we're up to 29% bearish, all right? Not not where we want to be at 60, uh, but we're increasing a little bit. Rob says cash is a position. It absolutely is. All right, 45% bullish. Let's see, how how's Okay, now that gold search now is up over 2%. Here's Angel's Wings. Now it's starting, uh, it's still kind of moving sideways here. Let's go back to the to the uh, Derby view. And let me change the filter. Let's see, if I go to $10, 33%, $5, 32%. Let me stay at $10 and 500000 Now we're at 30%. And now let's just watch the race. Let's see. Do we have any short? Well, worst performing contra ETFs. Okay. So those of you who can't short, don't want to short. Uh, here's here is an alt, here's your other option, right? Um, worst performing contra ETFs, uh, performing really well as the market's starting to fall. Jack says you don't have to be in the market all the time. You absolutely don't. You absolutely don't. Looking good though. Worst performing contra ETFs. Uh, you know you may want to cherry pick a few of these guys. You know there's there's a there's two S and P 500. There's three Nasdaq. There's a few Dow's. I don't know if you want to. Uh, there's actually yeah three. Um, choose them all. Maybe you just choose a few of the best performers. Okay. But look what do we have down at the bottom? No Mo Mojo inverted. Okay. He finally here's a shorting search. 1.29 percent. Look at that equity curve. All right. A lot of pharmaceutical companies in here. 1.3 percent. Now I'm going to do this. It's after 10 o'clock. We're really starting to see things develop here to the downside. However, oh, look at this. Now 59% bearish. Okay, so we're close to going going uh, short here. We're close to pulling a trigger. However, <clears throat> look at the average performance. It's still in the red. I don't think I want to I want to go short yet unless that goes into the green. Uh, and I really want to see strength. You know, 0.2%, 0.3% gain on average. I want to see that before I decide to go short. Uh, not especially given that it's Friday at the end of the week and, and where we stand as of now. You don't want to take on any added risk um, by getting in on a short position when you don't see a lot of strength behind it.
think that kind of makes sense. Benjamin says, this, uh, this downward movement looks scary this very minute, but my past few swing experiences, it's okay, especially that the RS and VST numbers are really good and my on the right mindset. I'm not sure what you mean, Benjamin. Can you rephrase that question for me? I'd love to answer it, but if you could just rephrase it. Uh, here's the VVC now steadily falling. So we didn't get a retest. James says, not going to risk my 2.8% gain for the week. Going to smile and just watch. That's awesome. Love that. All right, so we didn't get necessarily get a retest off of that um, support level that we broke, but we are oversold right now. VVC is is uh, exceptionally oversold there. All right, Noma Mojo Inverted has gravitated towards the top, just about 60, but at 59%. But again, we don't even have an average gain just yet. So while this move looks good at the moment, this break, this downward break, while it looks good at the moment, we're not seeing enough to pull the trigger short. All right. Well, I'll stay on with you guys for, for a few more minutes. I'll, um, feel free to, to stick around, ask, ask questions. We can do a little question and answer now. But I think we all kind of know what we're looking for. We have a somewhat of a bearish bias because of this support level that was broken. We have close to 60% bearish searches making money. The advanced decline is falling. But I think that this number here, uh, you know, before actually pulling the trigger, we want to see in the green and rising. We have a nice number of winners, 56%. But again, um, trying to put the odds in our favor as best we can. And I think we just need to see that number move up a little bit. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bill, unfortunately, that's not uh, um, a uh, capable. We're not capable of doing that. Bill says, "I would like to type in a stock symbol like SPXC and find which searches have it in it, the top 20." Uh, yeah, almost reverse engineering there, Bill. Unfortunately, no way to do that. Okay, Michael says the market ticked up. Yeah, all right, it's it ticked up now. We're still in that high, uh, lower, lower low pattern here. So I can almost take that line off. We're going to keep that line on because if it goes above that line, we may consider going long again. But that, I think, is going to be the earliest that we do that, uh, earliest that we go long. Okay, so we have levels now that, we, that, we're, uh, that we've drawn on this graph um, that we can just keep an eye on. Let's see. Oh, Bill says SPXC is up 15% from the open. Gotcha. Gill says it's a, it is good to wait for now. A lot of indecision for now, sure. Okay, Benjamin, I got you. <laughs> uh, Robert says, how how did you show a five percent gain on your portfolio yesterday after selling the stocks? Not a five percent gain. It was a 005 percent gain um, for the day yesterday, which I think it works out to about eleven dollars. Um, so no, point oh five percent. Yep. Um, Mike says the pattern has been a run up in the afternoon. That's what the pattern has been. Yes, Mike. Absolutely. Robert says, oh, I mean 0.05. How do you show it after it's sold? Uh, well, the next day it doesn't show up anymore, but as, uh, before the market opened today and yesterday, it showed it right in the percent gain loss for today number that was, that said 0.05, uh, earlier, earlier this morning before the market opened and, and yesterday. Mike says 10 and 250, 60, 10 and 250, 61. Uh, Mike, you may want to change it. Well, uh, yeah, you had the market open. I'm, I'm on 10 and 250 here. I'm only at 46%. Peter says, why remove the low support when a retest of the low would show a move to the downside? Gotcha. Okay. Sure, 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 sure. I see. Yeah, put that line back on. If we come up to it, retest it. Sure. I, I see I, I see what you mean there, Peter. All right. Let me put that line back on. But we are coming up here off of, off of the swing low. Stochastics is coming up off of the oversold situation. And we are approaching that now, which is, res, uh, now, which is resistance. Cheryl says gold with a question mark. Let's see. Let's see how they're doing. Nothing's really performing very well this morning. 
guys. Um, where's where's and here is a search that finds a lot of gold stocks. But Angel's Wings was the other one. Let's let's see. I don't. Uh, that's I think greater than two dollars. Here's Angel's Wings. 1.73% gain and starting to pick up steam a little bit. Okay, just a little bit. 90% winners. All right, so it's starting to move up. So we're starting to have some searches that are in favor. However, we don't have 60% yet. All right, that's not that's it's not going to do it. 47 and 51 is not going to do it for us. Um, VVC now approached that resistance level, now starting to pull back a little bit. Let me just pull this out a little bit more here. All right. Going back into the derby, still for neck and neck here. Got a got a, uh, a dead heat, 48%, 48%. A little bit, little bit of a bullish bias given that the average uh, gain is in the green. However, that has a lot to do with, I think, Arjet, which is in most of those, most of, most of the searches. Okay. Uh, you know, one stock going up 50% is going to, of course, give this number a, a boost. Bob says, is your portfolio a cash account? Yes, it is. Um, it is. He says, you can't day or swing trade in an IRA. Right. Can't day trade in an IRA. That's, that's for sure. Jonathan says, gold itself is trending down today so far. Yeah. All right, so we're still again 46 and 46 and 46, and here's the market really not doing much. Jack says, "I will see you on Monday." We'll have a good weekend, Jack. Uh, Richard says, "Nugget N U G T is turning up." Let's take a look. Here, here's here's the performance over the last few months here, right? But just today, yeah, it gapped down. Now it's starting to, to head a little higher. Okay, this is a triple leveraged gold ETF. All right, folks, um, let me just kind of wrap up and say that it's been a great week this week, okay? Today is not a good day at all. Let me go back to a market timing graph intraday. Today is, is not a good day to be trading as of right now. We're seeing that in the market timing graph. We're seeing that in our derby summary, okay? Not a very good day to be trading right now. Like Mike said, maybe the breakout will happen later in the day, but um, it's been a great week. Again, you know, uh, I know Mike's, I talked to Mike a little earlier, it was up over th almost 3%, um, taking my money and kind of enjoying the weekend. So hopefully you guys do that as well. And um, well, we'll just reconvene back on Monday. So have a great weekend, everybody. And if you do decide to get in the market today, just record those trades and we'll, uh, we'll talk about them again on Monday. Have a great weekend, everybody.